And all of Central Iowa, welcome to Max World Live. Max World is your world. Every day we talk about the issues and topics that matter most to you. And as always, it's your voice we want to hear in Max World. So join the conversation by calling 515-244-0077. And now, here's the host of Max World Live, J. Michael McCoy. All right, good afternoon, six and a half minutes past the hour, 26th day of February in the Lord's year 2016. J. Michael McCoy here with Max World Live on 99.3. Of course, it's been a uh, it's been an interesting week. Chris has not been here all week. Uh, we have uh, scouted the land to try to find him. Uh, we put out an amber alert on him, and everybody knew he was older than like 18, so they didn't pay attention to us. And so now I find a picture of him, and it's it's on his Facebook page. Um, he's been in Nashville trying out for uh, a country band. <laughs> really? Yeah. He wanted. To, <clears throat> he went down there to be a backup singer, and I guess he accomplished it because every time he started to sing, they'd say, "Can you back up <laughs> just a little? <laughs> just back up a little more." <laughs> anyway, no, he's been at the national. Uh, uh, Religious, NRB, National Religious, religious broadcast. Broadcasters. I hate that term, religious broadcaster. I just don't. Catholics can be religious broadcasters. I don't want to be a religious broadcaster. <laughs> I want to be a relationship-based broadcaster. All right, Tim Orland is here. And uh, um, needless to say, you're a little hot under the collar. A little. So l- tell me why. Tell me what's going on. But you're, you're president of Personhood Iowa. The executive director. Well, whatever. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'll give you several titles throughout I, I, I the show. I have no doubt. <laughs> um, so there was a House bill. Yep. It, yep. There was a there was a bill that uh, Greg Hartzell, representative from down around Sheraton, brought forward. Um, that was uh, called the Life at Conception bill. Life at Conception. Yep. And uh, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Um, real short, maybe one paragraph. And uh, Greg was able to round up about 10 sponsors for the bill. Uh, You know, we've got a house that's uh, dominated by Republicans, 57 to 43. Um, It got assigned to a subcommittee uh, of the Judiciary Committee. And the two, so there's three people in a subcommittee, and two of them were Republicans, and they both happened to be co-sponsors of the bill. Okay. That sounds very good. Sounds like a good thing, doesn't it? Who are the who are the uh, who are the other two co smar the, well, the two that were the so uh, yeah. Matt Winshittle, who's uh, Speaker Pro Tem uh, leader. Matt who? Uh, Winshittle is how you say Winshittle. Wind. Yeah. Be careful with that one. Yep. We don't want any fines. No. All right. Go ahead. Um, and then uh, uh, Walt Rogers okay. was the other one, and he's from just to the uh, west of us here in Dallas County, I believe. Uh, but they but they had both co-sponsored this bill and um, last week I believe was funnel week and it uh, for a bill to pass it has to pass out of a committee it's on one level and it did make it out of the subcommittee. So you've got two Republicans and a Democrat on a committee. Mm-hmm. Is there more than that? Not on it's a subcommittee. Nope. So it's three. It's you, the way I understand it is there's one from each party and then whoever's in charge of the. So in this case, the Republicans have control of the House. So then that, therefore, they have the they get the chairman. And those three people didn't get it passed out of subcommittee. They didn't. They didn't even call the subcommittee. They didn't even meet. <clears throat> okay, you got you got to back up. I'm <laughs> I'm sorry. I I don't. There's something wrong here. Yeah. It's sponsored by Greg Hartsill. Yep. It's got ten. <clears throat> excuse me. Ten co-sponsors. Yep. We hold the majority in the House by a fair amount. Yeah. And it goes to a committee. Right first, yep. yeah. Well, it goes to the Judiciary Committee, but then it has to it goes to a subcommittee before it gets brought back to the full committee. Did it make it out of the subcommittee? That's the committee it didn't make it out of to even get back to the full Judici- Judiciary Committee with two Republicans and a Democrat. Correct, and the two Republicans are co-sponsors of the bill. Uh, how does that work? 
I mean, I don't mean to be rhetorical, but well, seriously, I don't understand how that works. Sure. Well, um, I wrote, you, you said I was hot under the collar. I wrote a piece, uh, a blog on personhoodiowa.com, shared it on the Facebook page, and, and shared, um, actually, Matt, uh, Representative Winshittle's own words to some of his constituents um, saying, and I'll paraphrase it because it was fairly fairly long, but basically that uh, he, he prayed a lot about this and, and the Lord told him it wasn't the right time to bring this bill out, and which is a common refrain for the last, uh, I think he's been in there six years or so. And where is he from? He is in House District 17, so he would be kind of north of Council Bluffs up along the river towards Sioux City. Okay. So what do you do? <laughs> well, I mean, um, how, how I, so, so we found, so I found out kind of the situation when we were here a couple of weeks ago when we had uh, Rebecca Kiesling yeah. in and, and then I found out um, after that, that uh, there was this bill and a bill that, that she was uh, behind, um, you know, the uh, parental rights for rapists, r- removing those. So, so a lot of stuff was going on. It was funnel week. So um, I went down and uh, sat in that subcommittee for representative Hartzell and then found out that this bill was sitting there and um, there was another bill out there a pro, uh, pro, prohibition of selling fetal body parts and they didn't think that both of these bills could could make it in this uh, in the committee they thought it'd be too much for them to handle apparently and uh, um, so we found out that not only did personhood Iowa support this bill the family leader supported this bill and so did Iowa right to life and that's per- you know, you think everybody in, in the pro-life, we always support the same bills. It's not always the case. So this was a pretty rare deal. So on Wednesday, a good deal. A good deal. Yeah. So um, I talked to our friend Shane Vanderhart. He he put a, a story out urging people to get involved. Iowans for Life was putting out word um, uh, alert to their folks. Um, the folks with the, uh, several of the Missouri Synod folks were sending out. Uh, encouragement to get this thing going. Um, and, and I thought we had a 48 hour window, it ended up being about a 24 hour window, but we put a lot of heat and pressure on them, a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails. And like I said on my blog, I, I posted the response uh, from Representative Winchittle about uh, why it didn't, didn't come forward. So it's, um, you can take it for what it's worth. I, I, I think we've, for a long time, you've been able to call yourself pro life in this state. Even if your actions don't bear that, so um, we, we just want to make sure that people know about this. And again, the story I told you, I told to a lot of people going into that funnel week, and they said, "Well, that's great. We're going to have this bill, right?" Sadly, no, we didn't. And the and the Republicans shot it down. They just never brought it to subcommittee. They didn't think they the, the words were or the the, the um, refrain was that they didn't they, they didn't want it to steal all the oxygen in the room from this fetal body part bill so did the fetal body part bill make it it, it did um, in, a, in a much watered down form all right so so we do have that bill left on the, the it's, floor it's still yep still moving forward <clears throat> and what does that bill call for um, it, Again, it's it's basically prohibiting any sale uh, for um, any any sale of fetal body parts. So anything you know the the um, remains after an abortion, any of those type of things. So that's a good thing. Um, sadly, the original bill had a lot more teeth than the one they're pushing forward, um, and and I'm really nervous that this is our high water high water mark instead of the life at conception bill, which should be our high water mark every session. Um, and, and I have a feeling that this might be a negotiating, a negotiating tool for uh, when we get down to budget and the Health and Human Services budget, which is, a, you know, uh, there hopefully will be something in there about defunding Planned Parenthood as there was last year. See, uh, Tim Overland is my guest. He's the uh, <clears throat> founder, co-founder. Head janitor. Head janitor, <laughs> chief bottle washer. <laughs> At Personhood, Iowa. Um, you know, it's funny because I was just listening to a sermon this morning from my buddy Matt Chandler. Um, mm-hmm. And he did every year in January, he does a sermon on uh, life. Mm-hmm. And he just lays out all this scientific information that no, no one except a liar could deny. 
And I thought about you coming in today thinking, how did, oh, the Democrats. The Democrats must have done it. (laughs) The Democrats must have done it. So this Matt guy, Mm -hmm. um, he prayed about it and the Lord told him it wasn't time. It's not time to stop the killing of innocent babies. His words. Okay. Um... I want to turn this over to the audience, and I want them to tell me what they want me to do. Um, And you can do that through the Service Legends Truth Text Talk Line at 515-809-0993, or you certainly can call on the studio line and talk to us at 515-244-0077. Because I don't... I just don't want to be nice. That's how I felt all week back. <laughs> I just don't want to be nice. I just, it's like, you know, I want to, um, I want to find somebody to run against Matt. We have until March 18th to turn in the paperwork for uh, primaries. And what about Walt Rogers? He, he's in our listening area. He is. He's not the, uh, he's not the chairman um, so we did encourage people to call Representative Rogers as well to encourage his chairman to do that. Um, I, I've never heard of any response back from. Well, we can we can, we can assume that if the Democrat voted no and Matt voted no, Walt Rogers could have voted yes, and it wouldn't have meant anything. Well, and there wasn't really there was never a vote held. It, it's up to um, Representative Winchettle to call or Chairman Winchettle in this case to call the subcommittee. He never called the subcommittee, so they didn't even have the chance to vote. Okay, I want to hear from you. 515-809-0993 or on the studio line at 515-244-0077. How would you like your local Christian radio station to handle this? Your voice I want to hear next, live on The Truth. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Hey, everybody. I brought Northern Lights pizza. And it's got Graziano sausage. (laughs) 
Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for their opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. <laughs> 21 minutes, <clears throat> excuse me, 21 minutes after 3 o'clock. Let me take a drink of water. 26th day of February. Uh, the final week is over, as you probably know. And House Bill, what number did you say that was? I believe it was 2142. Is that right, Bob? Yes. You want to read the, the bill for me? Do you have it in front of you? Or did you already take it off? Uh, if you already took it off, don't worry about no, it. No, I have it here. Section 1, new section. Um, rights and protections beginning at conception. The sovereign state of Iowa recognizes that life is valued and protected from the moment of conception. And each life from that moment is accorded the same rights and protections guaranteed to all persons by the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Iowa and the laws of this state, the Iowa Supreme Court shall not have appellate jurisdiction over provisions of this section. Yep. I think Section 2 says it's even so important that as soon as it's signed by the governor that it would be law immediately and not one of those, you know, July yes. 1st type yes, things. Yes, it's an immediate thing. Yes. <clears throat> Five one five two four four double o double seven. I, I, I'd like to hear it from you. I just, what do you want us to do? I mean, your silence tells me that you're okay with abortion. That's what your silence tells me. Your silence tells me that uh, well, we can't win anyway. Your silence says well, I'd never do it, but you know, it's not my job. I think a lot of it tells us, Mac, that. Uh you know, we're hearing in the political world, well, we just if we just got a Republican this, a Republican that, yeah. you know, then, boy, it's go team Republican, and that's it. It doesn't matter, the, you know, as long as they have an R after their name, it doesn't matter. And, and to me, um, you know, I'm at the point where um, Democrats just do what we expect them to do. They generally tell us the truth. We, they tell us what they're going to do, and they follow through. It's my guys that I'm tired of, you know, my guys, in quotes, uh, that I'm tired of fighting against. We don't have any control over what Mike Gronstall is going to do in the Senate, but we do have control over the subcommittee, this committee, and this House at 57 to 43. It's not even close. It's our job to pull this forward, and, and then, then it's up to Gronstall, and he can face his maker with his decision. 515-244-0077. That's the line you can call in on. You can also text us your thoughts at the Service Legends Truth Text Talk line at 515-809-0993. Let's go to the phones. John, you're live in Max World. What you say? Yes, sir. I believe you should try and get this man on the radio. Uh, you're either pro-life 100% or there ain't no halfway in between in the middle and uh, see what he's got to say and be uh, accountable to the public. Uh, it's just like, uh, they, you know, they people call themselves Christian. They're Christian alcoholics, Christian... Uh, liars, it's just like this with pro-life. You're either 100% or you're not. Yeah, John, what? I just want your perception, perspective for a second. Why, why would you not vote yes on this if, if you're a Republican? And uh, the, guy, the guy says he put it to prayer. Who, wh whose yeah. Jesus is he praying to? Exactly. Not everyone uh, that uh, prays is hearing from uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. If they're not if they're not serving him 100 percent, they're not hearing. Because the Bible says in Psalm 66:18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And uh, this man needs to be accountable. And I don't understand why he would not pass it. I would why he would not put it forward. Because that's what the Lord told him to do. Which uh, I I, I got to tell you. You know, I'm 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 only five years into this following Jesus stuff. But if there's one thing I learned real early, when anybody ever tells you the Lord told me, run. <laughs> exactly. Run. When you look at the prophets of old. One uh, old prophet said God told him to do this, and it, it was a lie. 
So uh, we just got to be careful when somebody says the Lord said so, because the Lord ain't going to tell you to go against his word. John, I appreciate you listening, man. Thanks for calling up and sharing your heart with us. Thanks, Mac. Appreciate what you do. Thank you. You bet. 515-244-0077. That's the place we can hear your voice. And if you simply want your heart heard, you can text us your thoughts at the Service Legends Truth Text Talk Line at 515-809-0993. Is this politics? I mean, did somebody somewhere say, listen... Don't let this get out of committee, and I'll I'll do a favor for you on another bill. Well, it's I mean it's it all, just amazes yeah, yeah. me. It's all politics up there. There's no question. Um, there's this. There's been this notion, as I was just saying before John called, that uh, we um, we only do things that um, we think might pass, or we think might um, you know get through courts or whatever. And, and as I said, we have a jurisdiction that. Um, we control what we can control. You know, we don't control what I don't control what you can do. I don't control what Bob can do. I control what I can control. And, and when you have, you know, our elected officials have a higher standard to live under. They, they, they make decisions for all of us. And if they aren't, um, doing what they're supposed to be doing, and, and that is, um, you know, uh, enforcing i guess for for lack of a better term but but you know they, they guarantee our rights that's the, that's the way i was going so they they, they guarantee the rights our god-given rights and if, if they're not acting as as they're supposed to act um then then that's on them and they have a higher responsibility when that because that is in their jurisdiction his last name by the way is spelled w-i-n-d s-c-h-i-t-l and on his facebook page he shows him and his wife holding automatic weapons. Obviously, he's uh, pro-gun. He's a pro-Second Amendment guy. I want to see if he, he said anything on his timeline about this. Nope, his last post is in August. Oh, my gosh. August. <laughs> okay. I, I would encourage folks, and this isn't about getting blog clicks, but I would encourage folks to go and read his words. I mean, I, I just quoted them directly from something he was sitting out, sending out to constituents. Yeah, where do I find it? You go to personhoodiowa.com. P-E-R-S-O-N-H-O-O-D-I-O-W-A. Okay. Dot com. Yep. And then just go on blog, click on blogs. It'll be the first one. And uh, you should see a picture of Greg Hartzell pop up first. He's the... He's the champion, one of the life champions up there. There's a lot. Well, we need more. Do we, do we get to call him a champion now? Greg Hartzell, we do. Why? He didn't, he didn't, he, w did he do his job? Greg Hartzell did his job. He brought forth the bill and, mm -hmm. and it got stuck into a committee that he didn't have control over. All right. I'm waiting for the blog to come up and it'll tell me what marks or what matt's exact you'll have comments yep, were. you'll see his uh email to a constituent uh we encouraged folks to contact um matt and and one thank him for co-sponsoring the bill and encourage this was before the funnel and encourage him to bring this out of the um out of subcommittee and you know get it to the floor and uh um and then you know he sent back a response that kind of left everybody flat it was flowery and full of pray, praise for the Lord, but and he says he's on our side, but to me that comes to a, we need to start looking at our fruit. All right, so um, uh, my, uh, my, 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 what am I finding here? I'm not finding what I need to. Can you slip around here and just play with this and get this so yep. I can read his comments? Five one five two four four double O double seven. If 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 you think this show sounds a little disjointed, maybe not as prepared as as I should have been. Um, bingo, guilty. Both hands up, guilty. I am, I am flabbergasted. I'm absolutely flabbergasted that we couldn't get this thing past committee with two Republicans on the committee. 
because it's just a it's a it's a majority vote, right? Two to one gets it. Right, is this where it is? Yep, this is the constituent and the nurses. That's his answer, right? Here's his answer. Um. Uh, dear uh, representative, uh, thank you for sponsoring the personhood bill. I see that so far there is no subcommittee hearing scheduled for it. I would strongly urge you to schedule a meeting immediately to meet the funnel deadline. This is a very critical bill, which you have agreed to sign on to. I hope that you will see it passed all the way through the chamber. And then his response back is, thank you for reaching out to me on this very important issue. I truly believe that if we are to get our country back on the righteous path, we must begin by fully respecting life from the moment the Lord creates a new soul. Good. I mean, that's right. Yep. Good start. That is why I sponsored House File 2142 and have authored and signed onto many pro-life initiatives in the past. Since my first year in office, I have worked with folks across the state to protect and save the unborn. Fighting for the unborn was one of the main reasons I ran for office and my commitment to the unborn has not changed. That's a lie. Everybody see that, right? That's a lie. That's a lie. You, that's, that's nothing more than a lie. I ran for office and was committed and am committed to the unborn. That has not changed. Hmm. One thing I have learned over the years is a better understanding of timing and tactics. Yeah, tell that to the 100,000 babies that lost their life today. Not quite the right timing, you know. What I mean by this is there is a right time to move forward and there is a right time to be patient and wait on the Lord. Before I made a decision on whether or not to hold a subcommittee on House File 2142, I spent much time in prayer seeking the Lord's face and his guidance on how to properly proceed. I also sought counsel with friends in the private community who I consider to be of good character and moral integrity. Hmm. Well, there's a problem right now. We need to examine his moral integrity and good character because obviously that doesn't mean to him what it means to you and I. Right. Yeah, I know. I'm angry. That's what you get with Max World Live. <laughs> this, is, this is it. The conclusion, the conclusion the Lord led me to was not to hold a subcommittee at this time for some complex reasons. No, it's not complex, Matt. You're a loser. You had a choice. It was in your hands. You voted with the devil. This decision did not come easily and was not made lightly. I think it was. I think it was. But I'll give him a chance to come on the radio and talk about this. He won't. I'll guarantee he won't. Without getting too far into the complexities of my decision, I want to explain one of the reasons I came to this conclusion. I did. Right now, we have a groundswell of support in the general public to ban the sale and procurement of baby body parts after an abortion. Uh, uh. We currently have multiple bills in the House to ban such practices in our state, and these bills could make it through the Liberal Senate, Lord willing. In my estimation, holding a subcommittee, which will never pass the Senate until it changes hands, could have a detrimental effect on being able to get a baby body parts bill passed. Okay, now I just, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm old. And sometimes my brain doesn't work right. So you want to support a bill that you can't sell baby parts, but you won't support a bill in which there will be no baby parts. 244-0077 and 515-809-0993. I want to hear your voice. This is important, guys. Tell me what you're thinking, would you? Coming back live on The Truth. Northern Lights Pizza's amazing garlic butter makes amazing breadsticks. Now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, High Bee, and Graziano's. Northern Lights Pizza. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. 
I'm Nicholas Wonderscheid. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the service manager. Marketing director and client relations manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate is free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still fixed right or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. Twenty-two minutes before the top of the hour, 338, 26th day of February, uh, Lord's Year 2016. Coming up next hour, um, a very, very interesting woman. I have a strong feeling that she is going to be on several times. Her name is Nina Rosner. And you can find out about her by going to greaterimpact.org. Greaterimpact.org. Nina has written a book. Well, she's written several books on marriage. She's a marriage person. Um, the latest book is called The Respect Dare. It's a marriage book for women. This, these are her words. And I said, give me, the, give me the short story. It's to help women learn to speak a man's language of respect. She also has a couple of other books, 12 Truths to Change Your Marriage and 101 Ways to Respect Your Husband. She also writes a blog at Nina Rosner, R-O-E-S-N, Rosner, yeah, I'm sorry, R-O-E-S-N-E-R.com. She's going to be on the phone with us. I talked to her for, I don't know, 10 minutes today on the phone. I don't like to talk to people very much before I put them on the radio because I want to learn at the same time my audience does about these people but i gotta know enough sharp cookie sharp cookie i'm really interested in hearing about this all right 244-0077 is the voice line and then the text line the service legend is truth talk text line is 809-0993 house bill um 2142 we thought was a slam dunk it was a bill to honor life from the moment of conception, which, by the way, science backs up, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They no longer can say it's just a gaggle of cells. Uh, Greg Hartzell uh, put the bill up, so he deserves kudos. Absolutely. He did everything he could do. 
Then it got into a committee of one Democrat and two Republicans. You're thinking, thank you, Jesus, slam dunk. Especially because they co-sponsored the bill to the two Republicans. Matt Winsittle. Winsittle. All right. And Walt Rogers. But Matt was the chair, is the chairman of that subcommittee. Yeah. It failed. It failed. And I'm reading Matt's response now of why it failed. Without getting too far into the complexities of my decision, I want to explain one of the reasons I came to this conclusion. Right now, we have a groundswell of support in the general public to ban the sale of baby parts after an abortion. We currently have multiple bills in the House to ban such practices in our state, and these uh, bills could make it through a liberal Senate Lord willing. In my estimation, holding a subcommittee. Oh, well, there's there we go. He just admitted. In my estimation, he doesn't have very good judgment. (laughs) In my estimation, holding a subcommittee, which will never pass the Senate until it changed hands, could have been a detrimental effect on being able to get the baby body parts bill passed. Okay, now hold on. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. I I know that. He would rather have a bill that the baby can be killed, but we can't sell body parts. Rather than have a bill, the baby can't be killed, so we don't have to worry about body parts. Am I, Bob, am I missing something here? Isn't that like six-year-old common sense? You know, I don't think like a politician. <laughs> well, my my response to to that was, um, because you know, look, the 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 he's right in the fact that there is that's obviously in the news. We saw that all summer long with the videos, the you know all of that. Although we've got some wackos in Texas deciding that the guy that filmed the video committed a crime by trying to procure the body parts, but Planned Parenthood didn't commit a crime for offering to sell them. So, but anyway. Um, Man, there's a lot of evil in this world, isn't there? <laughs> it's bad. But my, but my point is, and I've, I've said this all along, I, I kind of look at this as, as uh, like Will, William Wilberforce when he was uh, fighting uh, the abolition uh, fight uh, in, in England. He always led with what he ultimately wanted. He always led with abolition. And then if he had to negotiate from that position, then he negotiated from a position of strength. So... You know, my thought was if if the if the fetal body parts bill and and Sandy Salmon brought that bill up originally, she's phenomenal. She um, is a she's a great uh, pro life warrior as well up in the house. Uh, she's hasn't been up there too terribly long. So um, she uh, so so I, I, I'm not saying that that's not a good bill and not a good thing to try to achieve. My point on it is if we put up the life at conception bill. That's the what everybody thinks is you know the wacko fringe. Then it seems to me that it would make the 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 fetal body parts bill pass. Well, hey, that's nutty. This is in the news and this is popular. Let's go this route. So I would think if we're going to be strategic and you know uh, uh, political, that would be the 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 way to go and 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 let that more quote unquote radical bill provide cover for something that seems pretty common sense. But well, that's just me. Bob, um, I just got the guy's phone number. And so Ryan is trying to call him to see if he'll go on the radio with us. I will honor him if he does. I will not, I will not be mean to him. But I just... No answer? Oh, you're trying. Okay. Bob, help me with something. Is there a... And I'm going to catch you off guard here, so maybe you don't know. Is there a Bible story somewhere? Is there somewhere in the Bible where it talks about people, and these are my words, not biblical words, people will, will say they are for Jesus, but when it comes right down to it, they'll deny him? Well, there's a verse uh, or a series of verses that talk about, you know, we cast out demons in your name and we, did, we preached and we did all this, right. but Jesus said to them, I never knew you. So... You know, that's kind of something where you you um, acted out, but you really didn't know him. So I don't know if that's the one you're looking for. But yeah, but, I, I'm, I don't know which one. I, I, mean, I didn't. Peter have denied him, right? I mean, yeah, the cock crows three times. Peter mm-hmm. will deny you. The guy. I mean, every disciple at one point or another said, "I don't know this guy. I don't know. Hey, no, I wasn't there." 
and I don't want to get scourged. But but we do we you know I'm and maybe this is just being a young Christian. But you and I, the three of us here, and the people listening, we have an we have an advantage. We know Jesus rose from the dead, and we have seen the the miracles of the Holy Spirit all around us for twenty one hundred years. The disciples just saw their their leader murdered like a common thief. There wasn't any scripture at that time to say, you know, I don't know you. you you'll say you'll do all these things, but I don't know you. So I don't know what it was like to be a disciple back then. And I'm not going to judge them simply because I know the end of the story. And they didn't. Or maybe they did. I don't know. I mean, I know there are writings, the words in red, where Jesus tells them, I am the temple. I'm going to tear it down. I'll be back in three days. Have faith in me. Are we getting no answer? Okay. It's Friday afternoon. They generally are on the road back home at this well, point. Well, this is, uh, is this a cell phone or are you getting a home phone response? You don't know. Okay. So what's next? I mean, he, t- he talks about here later in the letter, uh, are you starting to see a pattern? Or no, maybe you That's said me. this. <laughs> this is are me. you starting to see a pattern here? First, our pro-life governor refuses to act well within his authority to stop sending our money to uh, plan, plan Parenthood. And now the pro-life leader says God told him not to hold a subcommittee meeting to protect. Hey, you know what? I think he ought to get the heck out of the legislature and go on the road with a tent revival. Because <laughs> apparently the Lord speaks to him. Uh, could I could I start with the lottery numbers, please? I mean, those are pretty easy. That's just five numbers and a red ball. See, this is when I'm not a very good Christian. I'm sorry. I, I uh, as you might be able to tell from that blog, I was pretty unhappy that uh, earlier this week when we when I started responding and getting some of the responses back. See, th- this is th- but this is this is when I fail. This is this. All my naysayers are now listening and going, see, he's not that good a Christian. Where's, where's Chris, right? <laughs> Get yeah. him back from Nashville. He's angry. <laughs> he's not acting. You should just forgive him, Mac. Forgive the, the, the legislator who, who lied to us. Forgive him. Forgive our enemies. We got one break left, and then we're coming back live with Tim Overland. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. Northern Lights Pizza, your home of the tasty crust. Our garlic butter sauce now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, Hy-Vee, and Graziano. Northern Lights Pizza. Hi, my name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live.
All right, 10 minutes before the top of the hour. Next hour is going to be a great show. Uh, Nina Rosner, uh, she is a, a young lady who wrote the book, The Respect Dare. It's a marriage book for women. These are her words, a marriage book for women to help women learn to speak a man's language of respect. Um, I'm sorry, what? I don't think. Oh, there we go. Uh, it sounds probably more uplifting than this, <laughs> this hour. Well, you know, if you're if you're going to do real radio, it's not all you sure. know, kittens and puppies. Um, all right, and we may have a, a caller coming in, Ryan. Somebody uh, text him, and they may want to come in and talk for a second. We're talking about a House bill that was almost guaranteed to come out of subcommittee, and then it was pretty good chance it'd win the Senate, the House, the House, because there were yeah. fifty-seven to forty-three or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. You would think. Yeah, maybe it would have died in the Senate, but it would have got an inch farther. But the single, the, the one person, the one, why does the name Judas, seriously, <laughs> the name, the one guy who could have made a difference, and he failed us. All right, who, who um, I think this is uh, your caller here. Uh, let's go to the phones. Uh, hi, you're live in Max World. Who's this? Hey, it's Chad Steenhook. I just wanted to call in and at least tell you guys thank you so much for talking about this. It's, a, it's an important thing to make sure we shine the light on those who aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing for us. Well, and, you know, the, and Chad, thanks for calling in. The problem is I, I'm just worthless after the microphone's off. But maybe I need to change that. Maybe I need to get proactive. I don't know. I don't, I don't like radio people or television people that get proactive beyond their medium. I think that's, that's kind of like a movie star endorsing something. Who ca- I don't care. Right. But you're still a citizen, Mac. I mean, you know, I mean, it's still your, you know, I know this is your world, but outside of these walls, it's, it's your world, too. I mean, it's. Uh... So, Chad, Chad are, you, are, is he, are you a legislator? Nope. No, I'm a just a grassroots activist. I've been involved. I've, I've run for office. And, you know, life issue, of course, is the most important to me. But, Mac, you got to realize that, you know, when you're on the radio, you're doing a great service letting everybody know. But, like, Tim and I, we're just on the ground every day, you know. Yeah. And we, we could use you, brother. Well, it just amazes me. All right. Now, remember, I don't know uh, Matt. Wind, and I'm afraid to say his, the rest of his last name. I don't know him. So, so this only comes from what I saw him read, you were listening, to the response yeah. of, here's why I chickened out. Here's why I failed you. Here's why in the 11th hour, I couldn't pull the trigger. Here's why I'm not really pro-life. Because I'd rather pass a bill where we can't sell baby body parts Rather than the bill says, oh, there won't be any baby body parts to sell. What, what am I missing here, Chad? Well, I think it's what everybody misses. And, and it's the same thing that I missed for a long time. And, the, and then that is that it, it's not nice to say, but they, they don't want it to go away. You know, they don't want the pro-life issue to be done. You know, they, they use it to fundraise. They use it, you know, he'll say he's pro-life. And he'll raise money. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Seriously. And th- that's just, they just, I mean, I know it's horrible to think, but that could be the reason, is that they don't want this issue to be done. And I, I, I can't, it's hard for me to even say that because we're talking about, we're talking about innocent kids. I never thought of that about that but yeah you could you can rally all your constituents you know support me in my campaign to end abortion now right but they can't get it they can't do it or they but you know like, they can't say that anymore the gravy train continues what are you gonna do vote for the democrat is he that kind of guy matt i mean i don't know i've, I've only met him once uh, and it's just been it was very cordial hi nice to meet you and that well, was politicians it. are always nice <laughs> unless you're donald trump <laughs> there's that <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So, Chad, what, what, what should we do? Uh, you've got a whole bunch of people listening to you right now, scratching their heads, probably like me, trying to hold back a few tears and a few cuss words, because, you know, I love Jesus, but I do cuss a little. What do uh, we do? I well, I, I think, the honest, honestly, what you have to do is you need to remove them from office, and you have to take the stance that the Democrats take. Take two years of a Republican and then win it back. 
And I think whatever you do, you just remove him from office. There has to be a consequence for not protecting life. And whether it's run independent, whether it's run third party, whether it's just to be a spoiler in his election so he can't win again, but he has to be removed. Is this his first? No, he's. Uh, I think he's been there six years, um, and he lives in a district that's very conservative. This isn't one where he has to hide from this issue. Yeah, basically, in that district, uh, the primary is the election because the Democrats won't hardly run against him. You know, there are times. There are times in in this life of mine, which I'm so grateful to settle into a relationship with Jesus. There are times when I know what the right thing to do is. And this is going to be really simple, but for instance, I belong to some really great early morning Bible studies, like 5.30 a.m. These are business guys that have to be at work by, you know, 7 o'clock or go home and take care of the kids. So we get together really early. And it's really easy for me sometimes to lay in bed and just say, yeah, I'm just going to sleep. But what happens is, I hear, I don't hear a voice. I get this feeling of God saying, and I'm not telling you God talks to me. I'm just telling you how I feel. And he says, that's okay, Mac. You get get another hour of sleep. I did have something really important I wanted to teach you. I wanted to show you. I wanted to share with you. There's a man there that needs you to come beside him. And I wanted you two to meet today. But that's okay. You, you. You just sleep. You need your sleep. <laughs> that sounds like on my mom. <laughs> well, that that's what this Matt guy sounds like. Yeah, I'm just going to go to sleep. I'm just going to go back to bed. I mean, he even says here, we've got more years down the line. We've got the most important thing, and that is to stop the sale of body parts. And if that fails... Chad, I appreciate you calling. You are welcome on the radio with me anytime. Maybe next time, bring Chad up here with you. Yeah. I'd like to meet him. Sounds good, guys. All right, Chad. Thanks, thank Chad. you. Well, Tim, I'm sorry. I feel for you. I've known you for a long time, and I know how this impacts your heart. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something really hypocritical. Don't give up. Because I don't know how long. I don't know. I, you know, I don't know if I want to fight this thing anymore. I'm just tired of it. If I talk really fast, can I throw something yes. in here real quick? Um, I just want to, I know we come on here and we talk a lot about abortion and, and, and how wrong it is and all those things. I just want to remind people that um, there are a lot of post-abortive women and men out there and uh, Jesus died for that sin as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, please go to your church or find a place like Restored by Grace or something like that. Uh, we throw around some, some pretty inflammatory language from time to time. And, and I just want to remind people that you know, Christ died for your sin, just like he died for all of us sitting at this table. And uh, when, when we're, we're being harsh, it's to paint the reality of what we're talking about. But there is healing. Um, you, you can be forgiven. And, and it, sometimes we forget to talk about that in our churches as well as when we're having these discussions. Yeah, and I especially want to aim that at the men. And I, I'm fortunate this did not happen to me. But I know a lot of guys who paid for them. Mm-hmm. And they suffer. Not as much as the woman does. I understand that. But guys, if that happened to you, you're forgiven. Jesus shed all the blood he's got. And that was for all sins. There's no asterisk. All right, Tim, thanks for coming here. Thanks, Salem Mike. Radio Network News up next. And then Nina Rosner. I think you're going to like this hour. It's got to be better than this one. <laughs> <laughs>